science is, in one sense, I suppose, always been personal for me because it's what I chose to do. I cared about it. But without question, it became personal in a very different way in the last four years now. Starting with Neva's diagnosis and through everything that's happened since. What are you? Is that good bread? Yeah, this bread right here. Since I started becoming a scientist, things have changed a lot. And that's what concerns me. And, you know, when I was first in this, of course, there were debates, there was climate denial, there were all these things, but the tenor of the discussion, the fundamental trust in science, all of those were far better than what I see today. If we don't restore that trust in science, I think we're in real trouble. I watched as science literally changed the lives of my daughter and my wife. <laughs> I started a scientific path with an interest in medicine. Despite that, started working in a field known as evolutionary biology. And then got interested in research science through a class in ecology. The early stuff I did was trying to understand that as the climate changes, as the temperature goes up, what's that gonna do to all of the carbon that's stuck in the world's soils? Chow's been doing at Nywat Ridge. Absolutely. Part of that's about looking at questions like, how do we grow our food? And how can we grow our food better? We do it poorly in rich countries, others don't have enough. And so I think more and more about that as a big piece of the puzzle. It's such a fundamental pillar of society. Where I want to put my effort is to take my work and make a difference in people's lives. I met my wife, Diana, here in Colorado. She was a beautiful person in so many ways. She had this very, very rare curiosity with just no ego at all. And then as I came to know her over the years, as a scientist, you know, that those traits are supposed to be at the core of, of how you do science, and it's why she was a terrific scientist. We were in different fields, but ones that were very complementary, and so it's not a surprise that a lot of scientists end up together because there's a shared passion there that translates to the personal. We liked to look at and live life the same way. Our daughter, Neva, was born in 2009. When she was three and kind of coming up on four, started to realize that she didn't seem to be growing and she started to have headaches, which is a bit unusual for a kid. One thing led to another and eventually she had to go have an MRI. And that MRI showed that it's a tumor in her pituitary region. And so that was life-changing. We tried to tell her that she has to have brain surgery and she has no idea what that means. That January, we took a family reunion trip to Costa Rica. Neva was doing fine. Diana, she was saying that she was having a little bit of trouble with her right hand. It was hurting her a little bit and typing, and she thought it was carpal tunnel syndrome. Diva asked me, does mama have something wrong with her head like I do, and all these questions. Diana's diagnosis was glioblastoma, which is pretty much the worst brain tumor you can get. Um, there are exceptions, but basically nobody lives through one of those, and most people don't live very long. And so, that was staggering. The system started to, to sh shift down. I was with her the whole time. I sat with her and, you know, she died right there. Yeah.
And Diana's buried in a place called Green Mountain Cemetery. The edge of it where she is goes right up against the beginning of the mountains. It helps to know she's right there and helps to know she's where she'd want to be and um, in, a, in a beautiful spot that meant something to her. Diana's deepest wish for us was that we not wallow in her passing forever. What mattered to her was that I was happy and the same for our daughter. Because I'm a scientist, I could understand even more acutely through so much emotion how everything I was seeing was resting on her. Her daughter Neva is in a place now that she hasn't been. She's tumor free and these moments of medical intervention are not ever present for her. They're their backdrop to just being a kid. That doesn't happen without this science. It's made it so much more personal for me. It's made it so much more fundamental that I give everything I can to support science. We do not invest in science the way we need to to support the fabric of all of our lives. We're all gonna face some really challenging times in the future. Science saved my daughter. Don't kill it. <laughs>